hello, and welcome to another installment of The Psychology of Better Call Saul, a series which attempts to understand the many psychological motivations of the characters in this television show. In this episode, I am going to take a closer look at the character of Ignacio Nacho Varga and his transition between a life of short-term gratification to a life of delayed gratification. Nacho, like other characters, has seemingly come to a crossroads during the course of the show in which he is required to begin thinking of his life in a different way. By looking at this character closer, we can see how he begins realizing the necessity of being more future-oriented, whereas much of his previous life may have been focused on short-term gains. Studies have shown that making many decisions based in the gratification of short-term needs, such as for quick money, engaging in drug or alcohol use, promiscuous sex, eating unhealthy foods, etc., can lead to negative long-term consequences. These short-term pleasures stimulate dopamine responses in the brain that make one feel good temporarily, but often lead to one feeling worse in the long run. On the other hand, long-term gratification delay is often more difficult for the individual as they need to go through difficult experiences while not receiving the normally pleasurable dopamine responses from short-term pleasures. Studies find that those who are able to forego feeling good in the moment for reward in the future tend to have more fulfilling and sustainable lives. With this information in mind, let's look at how these concepts apply to Nacho's evolving motivations. In Season 1, Episode 9, Nacho is going to meet to make a deal with the man who is being protected by Mike. This is a small-time deal for Nacho, in which he is looking to make a quick buck. Mike later mentions that he scouted things out and knows that Nacho is conducting this deal outside of his regular work with the cartel, and so he can't afford for things to go wrong. From early on in the series, we see how Nacho is willing to take big risks that might get him in hot water with the cartel, just as a way to marginally increase his cash flow. There doesn't seem to be many long-term goals associated with the moves he's making in life, as much of his motivations seem to be aimed towards making money for short-term pleasures, pleasures which will need to be replenished soon after they become unavailable or once the gratification they provide has lost its effect. There is the short-term pleasure, the high or dopamine rush as some would call it. This is our immediate motivator for action and makes us feel good in the short term but it doesn't last long and we become tolerant to it fast. In Season 2, Episode 4, Mike meets up with Nacho to stake out the Mexican restaurant that Nacho and Tuco do business within. Mike wants to know why Nacho is so intent on getting rid of Tuco, why he is thinking of killing him. Nacho proceeds to inform him of Tuco's instability and tendency towards using crank. Nacho says, So, it's like you said, if Tuco finds out about my, you know, independent ventures, it's going to be dog all over again. It's him or me. Nacho is beginning to gravitate towards long-term planning at this time. He knows that he can no longer depend on short-term planning when his life is constantly in danger with the people he works for. Despite his shifting view towards the future, he is still attempting to have Mike take care of things for him. He is unwilling or unable to engage in the unpleasurable acts which normally come along with delaying gratification. Instant or immediate gratification is a term that refers to the temptation and resulting tendency to forego a future benefit in order to obtain a less rewarding but more immediate benefit. In Season 3, Episode 6, Nacho is collecting money from the street dealers at the Mexican restaurant. Meanwhile, Hector sits in the back observing the operations. Nacho may have some semblance of independence, but he is still a middle manager being micromanaged by his boss. Crazy 8 is short on his money, and Nacho wants to be lenient with him and allow him to make it up the next time they meet. Then Hector asks, Who works for who? Huh? Nacho knows what this means and that he will have to physically harm Crazy 8. Nacho doesn't want to handle things this way. He would rather do the thing which is easier in the moment by letting Crazy 8 off the hook. But he has been forced into this type of life due to the accumulation of choices he has made in his life. 
due to a history of focusing on short-term gains. He has also become aware that in order to keep Hector off his back and protect his father, he needs to start making unpleasant decisions in the present to try and ensure some type of future benefit. Immediately after Nacho beats up Crazy 8, we see him sewing at his father's business as he begins to dissociate, resulting from the violence he was forced to enact. He sews right through his hand without realizing it. There are consequences for needing to plan for the future after a lifetime of short-term planning, which Nacho is beginning to understand more fully. In Season 3, Episode 8, Nacho is back in the restaurant with Don Hector behind him. Nacho has been preparing for several episodes to attempt and switch out Hector's medications for fake ones that will make him sick. Through conversations with Hector, he realizes that he will not be able to protect his father and his business since Hector is hoping to use the business as a front. He sees the potentiality of his relationship with his father disintegrating since his father is extremely upset with the decisions he is making, and so the need for delayed gratification sets in more dramatically. He must push to the side all the things in his life that are pleasurable and easy and primarily focus on the task at hand, which is to get rid of Hector. He knows that the only way to have a chance of a positive future for he and his father is to engage in behaviors at current time that are stressful, anxiety-provoking, and dangerous. The flip side of instant gratification is delayed gratification or the decision to put off satisfying your desire in order to gain an even better reward or benefit in the future. Reasons people don't delay gratification include factors such as age, desire to avoid delay, uncertainty, lack of imagination regarding the future, lack of money and poverty, and impulsiveness. In Season 4, Episode 8, Nacho has finally recovered from his injuries and has settled into his new rank within the business. Nacho is now in Hector's old position, and Crazy 8 is in Nacho's old position. One of the street dealers is late on his money, and Nacho literally takes matters into his own hands by ripping the dealer's earring out of his ear. Nacho has now been operating under Gus for some time, and he knows that he has to be completely on point regarding the count for their stash. He no longer has the luxury of taking things easy on himself or others, as so much of his future is on the line. Each decision he makes may be uncomfortable for him, but he understands the implications of not doing so. Nacho then goes home, and we see a first glimpse of the type of life he is living. He has a flashy car that he pulls up to his million-dollar, newly designed home. Inside, he has brand new furniture and electronics, large pieces of modern art, and two women who are ready and waiting to serve his every need. Remnants of drugs and alcohol are strewn about the house. We see how Nacho's life has been centered on the attainment and fulfillment of short-term sensual pleasures. We can imagine a younger Nacho who may have looked forward to this type of lifestyle and thought that he had everything he ever needed. But the present-day Nacho ignores all these things and goes to his bedroom by himself where he appears stressed and overwhelmed. He proceeds to his closet and pulls out two Canadian identification cards for both he and his father. The things he has been chasing for much of his life pleasures based around short-term gratification have come at the cost of a possible future for himself and his father, but now he is taking steps towards changing that. His focus has almost entirely moved from short-term gratification to long-term goals and delay of gratification. One way to move towards delayed gratification includes empathize with your future self. Before making a decision between instant and delayed gratification, Take a moment to think about your future mental state. If you opt for instant gratification, how will the future you feel? Will he be happy you made this decision the way you did? Or will he wish you had opted for delayed gratification? In Season 5, Episode 2, Nacho has gone to the stash house with Lalo as it is about to be raided by the police. They are informed by the dealers that the majority of the drugs are inside the house and there is no way to get the drugs out. Earlier in the episode, Gus had threatened Nacho's father in front of him, and Nacho was made to understand that Gus could kill his father at any time. Gus had also told Nacho that he needed him to gain the trust of Lalo, no matter what, so that they could start to collect information on his plans. Back in the car, Nacho is seen contemplating the current events and what he might do next. Suddenly, he exits the car and makes his move towards the stash house to get inside. He knows that he needs to do something extreme so that Lalo will trust him. 
Everyone in the car, including Lalo, had accepted that the drugs were going to get raided, so nothing needed to be done. Nacho could have remained in the car and avoided any type of pain and suffering, but due to his forward thinking, he instead needs to forego being comfortable and feeling all right in the moment in order to work towards his future plans of securing safety for himself and his father. In Season 5, Episode 7, Mike meets up with Nacho to talk business. Lalo is in prison at the time, and so Nacho demands to find a way to help his father since Lalo is out of the way. He tells Mike, I'm done. I went out. At this point in the show, Nacho is riding the line between two worlds. He still needs to be the underling for Lalo, which entails burning down Los Poyos Hermanos, but at the same time, he needs to answer to Gus as a snitch for Lalo's every move. Nacho has become a pawn in the game of several men, something he would have been opposed to earlier in his life, but he now sees the long-term value in his actions and the ways in which what he does now will have dire implications for what happens down the line. He is willing to do the dirty work for these two criminals. He is even willing to ditch the extravagant and fast-paced lifestyle he has been living in order to live a more peaceful and calm life down the line. There is also another form of pleasure which comes from long-term achievement. Satisfaction is perhaps a good way to describe this and it comes from sustained achievement and work over a long period. They give our lives meaning and help to create the long-term feelings of satisfaction, achievement, and fulfilling goals. They are often costly in time, money, and other resources. They are also not always immediately pleasurable. In Season 5, Episode 10, Nacho goes to meet with Don Eladio to talk about the future of the business. You can see on Nacho's face that he is taking this very seriously and contemplating his choice of words. Even when drinking the tequila, Don Eladio downs his in one gulp while Nacho sips patiently. He tells him of a plan to turn biker gangs against each other and to open up new territory. He's speaking about future ventures, about long-term business operations. Not only is he thinking about the future for himself, he's beginning to permeate into all activities of his life. When asked what he wants, he says, I want respect. I want to make my own decisions go my own way. Nacho is speaking in the language of someone who has learned from his past. He understands that the values which are important for himself, his father, and his general livelihood are connected to long-term thinking and planning. He now knows that he wants a life in which he is more in control, and the only way to make that happen is to start making decisions that have his future at the forefront, while going through whatever unpleasant situations he must in order to achieve these goals. This concludes this installment in the series on Better Call Saul. Please watch my other videos regarding other characters if you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching.